that on. There we go. Right, okay. So last week we were looking at colour pencils and I showed you a number of techniques using um, burnishing pencils and white pencil, how to blend colours and uh, my drawing that I, I worked on there. Um, it had lots of lines, didn't it? So the lines were used to show movement in the picture and also uh, the hatching built up the colour as well. Um, so hopefully, if my ca I hope my camera's on now. Now I've mucked everything up. There you go. Yay, it's on. Right, so this is the picture that I worked on last week, the uh, lighthouse. Um, if you wanted to watch, because um, I know, Anne, you missed uh, last week, didn't you? So... I watched it. I drew it oh, you have? laptop because ah brilliant it's hard on an ipad it's freezing yeah but got yeah. a laptop so that was good i've seen it all i think the lighthouse is amazing and the movement yeah it's so i was inspired a little bit by um um van gogh for that because van gogh as you know uses lots of very small dashes and dots and lines and things doesn't he to create this sense of movement um, so I've used a bit of that and the idea there was to build up uh, do an under sort of uh, an underpainting if you like but um, actually it's just with pencil so I chose this dark blue I think it was to start off with and then once the whole of the image had been done what I then did was build back into it with uh, lots of different uh, colours to add this kind of atmospheric effect. So the blue, the, the sort of purpley blue was dominant uh, and it came through a lot of the other colours that I then applied on the top. So we'd looked at... Um, We've looked at this previously, so we've done using the grid, and but using a triangular grid, and also as you remember, just come back out again, so you can see what, we, what I'm talking about. So as you can see, there's the grid, and then I suggested that you could photocopy your drawing, so that then you could work back into it and work over the top of it. So in some ways, a little bit similar to. Um, uh, creating a, a back painting and then working back over the top with that as well uh, oh yes and then there were these techniques of blending using a blending stick or a blending pencil looks a bit like this this is actually a blending pencil so it's like a pencil but without any uh, pigment in it and then over here we had one of these paper blending sticks and one of the new things that I introduced was using uh, a special tool which I now can't see because I used it earlier uh, anyway it scores the paper so that then you have these little lines on the surface of the paper there look so there's a close-up of it so you score the paper to add these lines which then when you pencil over the top you can see those little details and highlights on there there's another version of it so basically anything that's hard you can score the paper with and work over the top um, and you have, end up with these very fine white lines okay so this week um, what I decided we'd do uh, and if you've looked on the website you will have seen that I have put quite a lot of animal pictures on there uh, animals and birds uh, all with uh, the subject that we're doing at the moment, which is reflection. So we've got this uh, tiger, we've got a bunny um, having a drink from some water or a hair. Um, this one, I just thought it was funny. So <laughs> I just put it on. It's a, a meerkat sitting on top of a warthog, <laughs> which I just thought was funny. Um, it has got some water in the background, so I can get away with that one. We've got an elephant and a deer drinking by some water. So um, the main thing about this week, though, is that having um, done underpainting and worked straight into white paper, we're going to work onto um, a coloured background uh, today as well. So um, we use some Brusho inks to do that today, which are, uh, they come in like a little powder in like a little powdery pot and you just mix water with them. Um, so if we were together, I would probably um, get some of those out um, to show you. Uh, I can show you what I actually did in the lessons today. 
Um, the only advantage of using the brush shows over everything else is that you can also use some bleach um, on them and you can so you can take the color back out so you can have little highlights and things uh, but you can do that just as well with um, a white pencil or even a little bit of acrylic paint uh, which is what I might do uh, later on today or this evening so um, some of you will remember this one this was my owl that I did during one of the lockdown lessons and I created this watercolour background which I then pencil crayoned back over the top of and you can see the highlights that I've used here with white colour pencil working very effectively. Okay so this is the one that I worked on today um, and I've used a brusho ink background um, because the basically the whole of this picture and I'll just put the picture on over here. The whole of the picture has this kind of orangey uh, colour in the background. So I use that as the basis for the backdrop on the picture that we're doing or I'm doing today. There's a load of pictures, by the way, on the website if you haven't seen them, all with animals with reflections on. Um, so what I basically did here is applied a coat of ink on the background and then loosely and with freehand I sketched out the shape of the um, the robin at the top and the bottom on the reflections and then started to apply the colour pencils over the top once it was dry. I've also worked into the background a little bit as well with the colour pencil even though it's all orange already I've highlighted some of these areas to really bring out and just add a little bit more contrast between um, the robin itself and the um, background there. So quite simply really, we're just working over a background of uh, color. So you can do that also with anything else. You could, if you've got acrylics there, uh, use acrylics. If you've got watercolors, you can use what those. Um, the other thing you can do, uh, and some of you might have this at home, uh, although I don't know how many people have um, food colouring at home these days, but when I was a student, I used food colouring to um, to paint with at university, uh, sorry, at college. And then uh, when that was dry, you can use bleach on top to actually remove areas of that colour. So you can add highlights, basically. But I'm going to use... For this background anyway, I'm going to use a little bit of um, acrylic paint. So I've got this acrylic paint just here. And you'll have seen me do this a few times as well. So I'm just using some yellow ochre and a nice flat brush to create a background to work over. So um, I know we're doing something different again for the third week, um, but um, if you create your background as soon as possible, when you've finished your other pieces of work, you can start working on your new uh, piece after that. So if you're still doing a boat or a lighthouse or whatever it is you chose to do last time, then uh, do your background first. And then you can choose your animal so you're ready to start on the next one. So in other words, you can prepare a background in advance. So I'm using the flat brush here and a bit of water mixed in with my acrylic to loosen it up, make it nice and fluid. And in a few minutes, I'll show you how effective the, the bleach is on the ink. Um, as far as normal inks go, I'm, I'm not sure that either that... Um, bleach will work on that um, but you can try it out so I'll do a new drawing on this one this evening when I finished Mr Robin so just pop that on there like that. and I'm just doing horizontal and vertical brush strokes in order to keep the surface of the paper nice and even but that's not to say that you can't experiment a bit like on the owl that I just showed you but if you've got watercolors and you want to do something a bit different certainly go for that as well 
Okay, so this is what we're aiming for then with this week's work. We'll probably be doing this next week as well, so don't worry if you haven't got very far with it because I will carry on with it and talk a bit more about some other um, ideas to go with this technique as well. But the nice thing is you get some of those colours from the background coming through the pencil work that you're doing and you can also cover it over completely as well. So this is all done with uh, my colour pencil set that you've seen before where I've got a whole range of, of different colours. Uh, these are Derwent pencils just like the ones I used last time. So they're quite soft. And very Excuse me, Jeremy. Yeah. Um, is, oh, is it possible to use watercolour pencils as well, or is it best yeah. to use? Yeah, yeah. I've got um watercolour pencils here as well. These are a, a set of Derwent watercolours, watercolour pencils. Um, I've used them quite a lot, as you can see. But um, the thing I found about watercolour pencils is the the lead, you know, in them are quite soft. So they mix really nicely and you don't have to. Somebody was using them today and you don't have to add water just because they're watercolour pencils. You can use them like normal, but they're quite soft. So they work really well for blending and things. So this is the uh, Derwent Academy um, pencils. And then the ones that I've got over here are the... I think these ones are probably the next level up, if you see what I mean. So these are... Derwent artists pencils I think they use artists as a, a reference to being um, slightly better quality but you know you, it's not to say you can't produce brilliant work with any of these uh, pencils okay right so uh, have a look for an animal create a background and then we're going to work back over the top of that background when it's dry all right Okay, so um, I've already done the uh, top half of this uh, lovely Robin who's staring at his, um, his uh, reflection in some water. Um, so often the shadows on the bottom half of the picture are a little bit darker. And this one's not the case really. It's pretty much a perfect uh, reflection. Um, just at the bottom though, you can see that the robin's back fades out into the brownie sort of orangey colour that you've got just down the bottom of the photograph. So um, in a few minutes I'll be working on that as well. I do add actually one thing I didn't mention in any of the classes today is that um, I do add some kind of purples into the into the brown of the feathers and so forth. And that's just to give it a little bit more um, softness and atmosphere in there. I don't use the colour black at all in this uh, picture. I do have a really dark uh, brown, uh, which kind of mimics black, really. And then I use a combination of browns. And as I said, I use a little bit of purple just to soften that black um, or that deep brown that I just mentioned. Soften that down a little bit more as well. Um, one of the nice things about working over a pre-prepared background is using the white um, because you can use a white to make things really sort of pop out of the picture and bring them to life. And you'll see that in a moment when I paint um, these two uh, birds that are on the next uh, half of this um, video. Um, but I was finishing off here. I was finishing off this picture from uh, the two lessons during the day, uh, both at Rawns and Earthenborough that... Um, we had. So um, I use a little bit of a warmer colour on the back as well, slightly warmer brown, brown with a little bit of red in it um, to sort of lift the uh, lift it off the background a little bit more and warm up the picture. Um, and you can see me using this bluey grey in there as well on the uh, on the sort of grey grey area of the plumage just down there too. Um, but it's really enjoyable, especially enjoyable, as I mentioned earlier, is um, following the direction of the feathers around the shape of the body of the bird and around the shape of the head and so forth. Um, and another thing I used was a little, uh, to get a little bit more of a highlight in the eyes, I added um, just a couple of dots of a gel pen. 
Uh, and this was, that was Scout. Somebody asked me to get Scout. So that was my dog just there. Being an animal, wanted to be part of my animal lesson. But I'm doing birds. <laughs> so here I'm working back into the background again. Uh, as I said before, adding a little bit more color on top um, I'm just drawing more attention to the bird. It's almost like a halo, I guess, a halo of um, slightly lighter color against the really dark areas of the bird's uh, feathers and shadows at the bottom where I put the purple as well. Um, but overall, quite a nice little picture. Quite pleased with that one. Um, so here I had about, I think it was half an hour to um, do another picture. So I found these, this picture of these two lovely birds, um, of which I'm, I didn't get around to looking up wh what kind of birds they are. So if anybody knows, just let me know. Um, obviously you can do a, take a picture of it on Google uh, and do a search on Google. So um, once I got the shapes uh, and I was reasonably happy with them, I then neatened it all up with a putty rubber. And the reason for neatening up with putty rubber is because the gray of a pencil will mix with the color pencils uh, and if you want a nice bold bright sort of white which is what i've added in here then really what you need to do is get rid of some of those black uh, sketchy lines when you're trying to work out where everything goes um, particularly when you're doing it freehand um, so before i did um, when we did the boats i did a grid i'm not using a grid here i'm just going for it um, one of the important things to look out for when you're drawing anything is to look at the relationship of shapes to each other. So here we've got um, the two birds. We've got the beak um, of the one in the back and the one and the head of the one closest to us, more in the foreground. So I looked at the shape of their necks and, and the beaks and the shape in between those, which are called the negative shapes. And those negative shapes help me to position and get the right shape of the bird. Um, so in other words, you're using the background shapes to help construct the whole picture and get um, more accuracy. Um, so then I was using, uh, as you can see, I've applied some gray uh, into the background as well. Sort of very pale grey. As you can see in the photograph, the background is very pale. And um, I used this uh, yellow ochre background purely because I painted it at the start of the lesson. I may have chosen a different colour um, to do the background before then working over the top in colour pencils. But I decided, well, let's just see what happens, uh, as is sometimes is a very good thing to do. Um, is just to see what would happen if you did something that you wouldn't normally um, do. Uh, and in the end, I was quite pleased with it. I think um, if I had more time, I would remove more of the yellow from the extremities of the picture, because um, those little bits of yellow are perhaps a little bit distracting. Um, and as I work into the picture, you'll see that the um, I do add some more, so a little bit of white into the gray. And then I add just at the end there a little bit of blue as well. So the color builds as I progress, um, which is something I've been trying to say to everybody is that, you know, you lay a little bit like the, uh, the pencil drawings, the plain pencil drawings with graphite, you can build layers of texture and shadow on top of each other to create a very effective um, piece of work. Uh, and here I'm doing exactly the same with the color pencil and layering different uh, tones and shades on top of each other to build up those colors. Um, so this is about as far as I get with this, but um, I was reasonably pleased with this one. Um, obviously there's more you could do, but there we are. Thank you very much. Bye bye.